Well, hello everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop for another Screwy Tuesday. And if you watch my channel quite a bit, you know there's two guys that work in this shop. There's Chuck and then there's Charlie. Well, I think this video is going to be mostly about Charlie. <laughs> yeah, Chuck will talk at the end. because Chuck showed up today. But Charlie over the weekend uh, just uh, had a lot of fun, I guess would be the way to put it. So let me, uh, I'm going to move the camera and we'll talk about these uh, two fixtures here and uh, Charlie's attempt and then uh, we'll uh, have maybe have Chuck finish at the end. Hang on. Some months ago, I was at a tool sale, a, a machine shop had shut down and I had bought a couple things and I may have showed them to you in the past and I, I can't remember if I had showed this or not. Large place, 10,000, 20,000 square foot place, and pretty much cleaned out. And there was a 55-gallon drum over by some stuff. And I go and I stick my nose in the 55-gallon drum, and there's an old guy there with me. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's all, that's all trash. Well, I pulled these out of the trash. And this says uh, Brown & Sharp Manufacturing, number 790. Uh, you can see it's got a, a V on the bottom here. And it's a grinding fixture. It's got a degreed head here, which rotates. And then there's a degree head here that rotates. Well, this part right here, let's see, do I have it? Well, I'm not going to take it all back apart. This, somebody made this plate in here. And nice, and, and I thought this would work great on the grinder. You can set up an angle and use it. Pretty simple. Well... The other part of this tooling is this guy. This one goes in right here, and basically it's got a degree mark, so it's degreed, and it spins. This is probably the original fixture for it, and it, it's, you can see the three screws where it attaches in the back on the plate. Well, this has a taper, and I wanted to make an insert for this with a drawbar out the back and maybe put uh, an ER set up on the front of it. Uh, I haven't really decided. Uh, I could put a small chuck on it. Lots of different things. The confusion was the taper. What's, what is this taper? And so, you know, I have Morse tapers, threes and fours, and none of those fit, and R8s don't, none of that fits. Yeah, I did try to search and couldn't find anything. Uh, this is Chuck talking, not Charlie. <laughs> and uh, actually went over to my buddy Carl's, and he had some Jarno and a couple of things, and we fooled around with that. And uh, said, okay, I guess I've got to figure it out and make a taper. So uh, let's, uh, let's turn this show over to Charlie, and uh, Charlie's going to take you on an adventure. And uh, most of you guys right in the very beginning will... Uh, know that Charlie was heading down, or not heading down the wrong path, but uh, taking the long way around to get to an answer, I guess would be the way to, the way to uh, put it. But for a lot of guys uh, in machining that uh, aren't technically astute, like Charlie, <laughs> uh, the long way gets you there sometimes. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, off we go. So in an effort to determine the taper on this tool, I've set up a back plunger um, indicator and have it centered in the bore. This, this rotates, the bore is steady. It's sitting in the three jaw chuck, so it's, it's parallel to everything. And uh, so the, the indicator's in center and it's right on the end and I'm on zero. And uh, I'm going to use the DRO to move one inch and get a reading over one inch to see what the taper is in one inch. So hang on. Let's 
so you can probably hear that in the background. The lathe is on, uh, resetting the DRO to zero, and I'm going to move uh, one inch. Let's see, I'm not going to right right there. The indicator just started to move. So okay, so I'm going to move the carriage one inch. And I get a reading of about 17, 17 and a half, call it 18 thousandths. So 18 thousandths within an inch is uh, my taper there. I don't know what that tells me, to be honest with you. So, but we do have, we have a measurement there. Let me show you another thing I did. Well, the second thing I did is I made this guy, <laughs> a little crude tool. So, measured the bore here at the front with a telescoping gauge. My best ability to measure down in the bore at three inches. Did the math and uh, drew, drew the taper on this piece of quarter inch material. Then went over to the belt sander and tried to come up to pretty much a knife edge in the center and then I chalked it chalked the edge slid it in pretty tight seems to work and then looked at where it was rubbing on the on the chalk marks I don't know it doesn't tell me much though so I got another idea to see if I can uh, figure this uh, out. I've been reading the books, the Taper, the Jarno, the Brown and Sharp, and most of them are uh, 500 thousandths over a foot. No, let's see. I'll have to look at the book. Hang on. So, have the machinery manual open here to Tapers, standard Tapers, and the, uh, the Jarno is... Uh, 600 thousandths over a foot, which is uh, what about 50 thousandths a uh, 50 thousandths an inch. Um, the brown and sharp, dependent upon which taper, um, it varies. But uh, I'm not I'm not coming up with the number. I'm assuming I take the the 18 thousandths and double it, gives me 38 thousandths. Um, when I take my, when I take uh, 38, out, 38 thousandths an inch, and I take my little sample here that I made, and with the dimensions I got, and then if I mic it every inch, um, this has been reading at about uh, almost 40 thousandths, 36 to 40 thousandths an inch. And that kind of puts me in the same ballpark as doubling the 18 thousandths. On the on reading it, but I don't know if that's true. I, you know, this is above me. I I, I really don't know. Reading this, uh, all the different tapers and things. It's been interesting reading, but I haven't found the uh, the answer to myself. So I got another idea, and uh, let's go take a look at that. Did you hear the bell? Come on, guys, you got to hit the subscribe. Okay, button. here's my idea. Took a candle. And I'm melting the candle here on a hot plate. It's all melted. And over here you can see this is the uh, tooling head. I've taped off so I don't pour wax all over it. And on the bottom side I have it sealed. And I'm looking to pour about three inches worth of depth. So I'm not going to pour all of this material in there. Um, uh, three or five, maybe, maybe a little bit more. But I'm not going to pour the whole thing because this, this would basically overfill the bore. So, once it settles, then I, since it's a taper, I should be able to push the wax out, and then I'll be able to set it up and actually uh, set up the uh, compound to uh, cut the taper. I've done this in the past on uh, my doing internal threads. When I couldn't figure out what the threads were, I poured wax into it, and then actually unscrewed the threads. And that's worked out well for me. So we'll see what happens here. 
Uh, I'm not going to let you watch me pour it because you're in the way. Uh, we'll bring you back though once we uh, pop the plug out. Well, the heat gun, the hot plate's uh, 340, let's say. Pan here is uh, two, 235, somewhere around in there. For what okay, the wax is dried. And interesting enough, this was the downside. And you can see the shrinkage that occurred. Uh, as the wax dried, even though it was upside down. So with that shrinkage, well, with that shrinkage, there it is. There's the, there's the taper. You can see the shrinkage down into, there's, get you in camera there. You can see the shrinkage on the uh, small end, but I basically have a replica of that taper. So what I'm going to do is put it back back in the lathe and get a center mark on here on both sides so that I can uh, do the best I can for centering it up on the machine. Okay, I've got the wax set up here in the uh, lathe. Basically the shrinking, shrunken point, I use that as a center. And then I heated up a live center and uh, got the other one uh, centered while it was still in the fixture. So you can see there's two black lines there. I've had to make a selection of where I'm going to measure at and... I'm basically yeah, over that distance, yeah, four thousandths, four or five thousandths. Been playing with it, and that's about as close as I can get it for what it is. Uh, interesting enough, though, back on zero there, when. Uh, if you remember when I had the indicator in there, I was moving an inch, and that's basically a whoop. I have to back you guys up. So if I go to that black line, to that black line, call it right there, and if I go an inch, I'm going about the eighteen thousandths that uh, I was getting prior. Try that again. Let me get something in there. Well, actually I'm getting a little more than that. Oh, now it hit. Yeah, somewhere about there. So, I think I'm going to hit everything here, the camera. So, I think I'm close enough to do a test test piece. And uh, we'll see how it fits. I only really need the first uh, inch and a half to meet the taper. That's the way it works in the fixture. Um, and then the rest of it can just be a pull, uh, a draw bar effect. Uh, plus, I want to leave a spud on the outside for however I'm going to put a tooling on the end of it. But we'll give it a go here and see what happens. Here's my uh, test plug that I made out of Delrin. Basically made the bottom small enough so I had a place to hold it in the chuck. And left the top big enough so I have a knob to pull on it. And was basically looking to pick up this dimension right here. And... I blued it up and uh, put it in, and uh, I missed. I missed. You might be able to see that. I think you can see it there. It's basically the top is too wide. The diameter is too wide, 
and the bottom is is not uh, not we're not engaging down the side wall at all. It's it's basically catching right here. So I'm going to go back in, put this guy back in the fixture or in the chuck, and uh, make an adjustment and see if I can skim skim enough to get it. So we'll bring you back. Okay, reset the compound so we can go for a skin. We'll give this a try. Basically, only took about a half inch off here. So this is the uh, second time I just made that pass. I made the first one, and then the one you just watched. And uh, I'm only uh, two thousandths TIR. Where on the first pass I was uh, seven almost 8 thousandths TIR. So I must be making better contact on the taper and uh, we will uh, pull the taper and see what it looks like. Well basically the area that I just turned is making really good contact all the way around. But I'm not getting any contact down further. Just a, just a shade of it, maybe. That booger is in there. Just a couple of shades. So I think I'm going to make one tad of adjustment. We're, we're basically, I think, just over a one degree uh, taper is where this thing's at. Um, so I think I'll... I think I'll fool with it just a little more. Boy, that looks pretty good though. I got almost an inch of, inch of uh, taper bluing up there. Okay, I just uh, put it back in the lathe. Moved just a fudge of a degree. And you can see how much more it cleaned up before it uh, went to daylight. So uh, I'll re-blue it, re-clean the part, and we'll try it again. So I think you can see that. I got some real good contact. And I think that's uh, where I'm going to leave it at. And uh, go ahead and make the Make the actual part. Still have to design that one. I want to actually put on the end of it, but I think I got the taper figured out. Okay. 
Well, one and a half thou. Yeah, one, yeah, one and a half thou, T-I-R. And that's, I didn't pound the uh, fixture in there, but I made sure it was seated well. So, I think it's ready to get a, get a tool built for it.